Now we're going to be working on Henri Rousseau's background and you can see how he has this fiery sunset going on in one of the backgrounds and then we have some of these palm trees. I'm going to show you how to do the palm trees. This is some tropical, it almost looks like a yucca plant. I'm not quite sure exactly what that one's called. Um, but I wanted to show you how he incorporates snakes from the, this is the snake charmer, his painting called the snake charmer, but how he incorporates snakes into his painting. And the snake is right here. So once you have the leaves drawn, you can have it intertwine around the branches here to make it realistic. And then this looks like some type of a bird right there in his painting. And then there's a couple other birds right here too. You can barely notice them. So if you wanna hide some birds here and there, here and there into your picture, you can. That almost looks like the first one, almost looks like a vulture. And even if you wanna add some water in the background, oh, this is actually middle ground and then some trees in the real back, far back background you can. Uh, but that's some different ways. I wanna show you how to make a, I hope I didn't lose it here. I wanna show you how to make a um, palm tree, some palm tree branches for your, f and of course you can put in your fiery sunset. Um, Placing that, just draw a circle here around it. I'm going to wait for my fiery sunset, but I'm going to show you how to make some of these tropical um, start curve up and out, up and out, tropical palms. And he has these long, and the palms end with a straight line, slightly curved, and then come back very thin. And then they branch out almost like you're forming... You're coming out this way and then out this way, up, at a diagonal. Thin, bring it back, thin, down, a back. Tapering real thin, almost like a skinny cigar shape. And if you notice, the, this side's shorter because it's in perspective. So I'm doing long and skinny. You don't even need to have it connect to that stem because it's so small that you might not be able to see it. Taper it out with a slight curve, bring it back in. Thin cigar shape, or long, skinny V curves, matching. And then the same on this side too, you can even have it come up. Going up. back, up, back, and slowly smaller and tapering to the top. There, so there's some of your background here. And let's see if I can find that rubber tree that I really wanted. Here it is. It's right near the um, sunset here. Here's some other things he did, these tropical ferns. Things are just getting smaller and a little bit lighter in the very far background. But I'm gonna show you how to do that rubber tree right now. Start off with a slight curve. If you wanna do a straight line and then you're making your curves around it, you can. And then I'll add a straight line for a stem. And then I'm coming off on this side, off on this side. Make it a little bit higher. Up and back, up and back. These are pretty large leaves. Rubber trees are large with slight, slight taper to the top here. And then he has some that have flopped down, curve, round. Here's one that flops down. Curve it out and around. Add your little centers if you want to, the stems. Curving out and around. 
and then you want to come down and then if you want to make some branching up this way curve it slightly round and then tapering slightly round tapering and then you can have one flopping down curve round like that and that's your patterning how you would continue making this these leaves so we've got the palm trees the leaves then your fiery sunset you can trace something for it to get it round or you can even have it overlap and have it in the background so you want to have it overlap all of this with a large one some of the kids like to do this just take your time I'm gonna freehand this but you can trace something if you'd like that way you have this in the background and then the very far background is that just show layers in the background and depth now your tiny palm trees let's look at this example here you can see how they get lighter and they're smaller they even have some of these too to fill in so if you have a lot of blank spaces you can fill in with they almost look like cactus curve it up and back it's almost like you're tracing your finger down and back vary the height this could just give some taller have it go behind the leaves so that's another way of filling in space and then of course you have a lot of things down here in your foreground Let's see let me show you what they look like right in here and then when you color them in or paint them in, make sure you do lighter value. Right there. And you can even stick some monkeys in in the far background too. And that's basically how you do the background. Hope you enjoyed this series on foreground, middle ground, background, and Henri Rousseau. And here is an example, not quite finished, of foreground, middle ground, background in a Henri Rousseau style. This was done with oil pastels. Here is another example done in a Henri Rousseau, but we did leaf rubbings with Rousseau Jungle. And then we're going to do some watercolor paint on top of that. And here is a cut paper. Henri Rousseau style, which was fun to do. So there's many different ways of creating your Henri Rousseau jungle once you've learned foreground, middle ground, background. There's some different tropical plants here. On this one, I tried to stick in a lot of elements that I saw in Rousseau's jungle. And there was one painting he did where the monkey was actually playing with the Looks like they were playing catch, so I had the monkeys playing catch in this video, in this um, picture rather. And then here is a tempera paint that we did in Rousseau style. It's a little glossy because I laminated it so it would last, but we just did simple tempera paint designs. This was, I think, like first grade or second grade did this. And let me know how your Henry Rousseau came out and what you did to your jungle picture.